So, <coughs> getting back to our discussion, here uh, where do we use partial correlation it is used very widely in time series we use this to compute partial autocorrelation functions which we shall learn shortly. And as I said um, in many control applications or wherever you have multivariable processes partial measures are used to analyze the effects between a pair of variables <coughs> conditioned on all the other variables. So, essentially to isolate the effect of a in a particular channel to, iso to uh, quantify the strength of a particular channel regardless of all the other channels. There are frequency domain versions of correlation, partial correlation and so on, but uh, it is too early to talk about it as is uh, I keep approving one or two every day. Mm, so, if I start talking of frequency domain now then <coughs> I, I am afraid that I will have to scroll several pages. Okay. So, let us not get into that. Let me conclude this discussion on partial correlation with just a quick summary of the commands relevant commands in R that will allow you to compute sample versions that means estimates as you know mean, var and SD they all give you estimates of the mean variance and standard deviation. When you have you know, many variables then you can use uh, and you assemble them in a matrix then you can use call means or row means the depending on how you arrange your data. And then you have median and MAD yeah it is mad, but let us actually talk uh, read it as MAD, MAD stands for median absolute deviation. Now, median is a robust measure or a robust estimate of the mean it is still an estimate only computes an estimate. There is a theoretical definition of median we know what it is. You can use this median to estimate the mean and you can use MAD to estimate the standard deviation, SD is one way of estimating the standard deviation, MAD is another way of estimating the standard deviation, both are estimating the same theoretical one. And uh, of course, we have used COV, CORR and COV to, uh, uh, COV to COR and I think it should be COR not probably COR right. And then I have shown you already how to use LM for performing linear regression and uh, summary to display the summary of the regression that you perform. Now, we have also illustrated to you the how to compute partial correlations in R using this PP core package. <coughs> and uh, finally, there is also the semi partial correlation where uh, you, you condition only one variable on the other one. So, we have here in partial covariance we are conditioning both x and y on z. But in semi partial correlation you would compute cova uh, the covariance between x and y dot z or y given z. In other words in terms of the residuals you would compute covariance between x, in, uh, x and epsilon y dot z. This would be <coughs> the semi partial correlation between x and condition y. Likewise, you can compute semi partial correlation between y and conditioned x. Obviously, when you ultimately compute the correlations they turn out to be asymmetric, you should expect them to be asymmetric and the package that is given to you computes that. You may wonder why one computes semi partial, partial and so on. Well, there are reasons depending on what you want to do we do not use semi partial correlations in our time series analysis at all. But if you want to know more you can read, but in all of that literature as you read one thing that will help you understand the difference between semi partial and partial correlation is this perspective of correlation measuring the amount of variability one variable explains about the other. Right? So, if I think of y as a dependent variable and x as the uh, independent variable, the correlation between y and x will tell me how much variability in y x is able to explain. The condition uh, or the, the partial correlation is also an explanation of variability, but after discounting the effects of z on both y and x. So, it tells us what is the unique information that x contains about y that cannot be explained by any other variable. Whereas, the semi partial correlation 
in uh, suppose you, you look at covariance between for example, y and x given z will tell me <coughs> how much x can that is when you discount the fx of z whatever is left out how much that can uniquely explain that can explain the entire variability in y. It depends on what you want to do do not worry about uh, where uh, in the sense whether we will use it in time series we do not but maybe it will be of interest to some of you depending on the kind of analysis that you are doing. These are used quite a lot in social data analysis in uh, sometimes in economic data analysis and so on. We do not we, we generally work with partial uh, correlation functions. So, the package that you are looking at allows you to compute semi partial correlation. In fact, if you look at the expression for semi partial correlation <coughs> you will find that for example, the semi partial correlation between uh, between y and conditioned x will exactly look the same this here is the same there is no difference, but the correlation looks different. The semi partial covariance looks the same, but the correlation would look different because of the way you are normalizing that is all. So, let me in that sense the semi partials and partials are different and obviously, you should expect semi partial correlation to be asymmetric that is ok. So, I think that is that should be good enough let us not spend more time on this and you know this is some of the ways that I have already demonstrated more than the sample usage. So, there is no point in going over this uh, set of commands. So, that is it. So, we now draw our curtains on the review of random variables, covariances, expectations, conditional expectations, independence and so on. <coughs>